Hello, I'm Philip Muggleston, and in this series of videos we're covering the predictive capabilities native to SAP HANA. In this video we're going to look at data preparation and focus on binning. Now what is binning? Why do we need it? Well effectively binning is going to allow us to reduce complexity in our input data. Now here we've got some customer data showing the income amount for each customer. You can see this is a numeric variable and actually there are quite a lot of different values. If we go to look at distinct values, we can see that for 150 customers we have 43 different values. And that's not an extreme case. Sometimes you can have thousands or millions of different values, normally numeric variables. So if we were to do further analysis on this, for example, we wanted to build a decision tree, it would be very, very complex. That tree would have a very large number of leaves in it. So what binning allows us to do is reduce the complexity of income. For example, reduce that down to maybe three, four or five different income groups, which are representative of the income values we've got in the data. Now, one way you could do that is maybe through a simple piece of SQL script where you do a case statement and you say um, when uh, income is between zero and 30, between 30 uh, is group one, between uh, 30 and 60 is group two, 60 and 100 is group four, etc. So you could do that yourself. However, that that's involves you kind of understanding and knowing what how you want to group your data. The binning capability within HANA and the predictive analysis library takes a more statistical approach. It does effectively the same thing, but allows you to make those groups based on what's actually found in the data. So let's have a quick look at an example. Here, I've got some code, as always, made earlier. Uh, if you've not seen the Getting Started video of this series, please do so, because we're not going to repeat um, many of the things we discussed, the basic concepts of using the AFL, for example. So what we're going to do is use the binning algorithm of HANA. And what we need to do, as always, are to create some types, to create a signature table, and then to use the wrapper generator to build our uh, predictive function that we'll be able to call later. So in this case, as we already saw in the data, we have got a customer ID and we've got the customer income, which is numeric. So that's basically the key in terms of the input data. What we're going to do is to use the binning to create us a new table with the ID for the customer, but also to have an income group that will tell us which group that customer has been assigned to based on the value of income. And we can then use the signature table, call the wrapper generator. We're going to create a procedure called PAL underscore B for binning, and we're using the binning name. And of course, as always, the uh, predictive analysis library reference should be your guide. It's got full details on exactly what binning can do as all the other algorithms uh, and should, should always go to reference that to get more details. So let's run the code that creates our procedure in the underscore sys underscore AFL folder. Okay, that's now done. The next step is to set up for our application. So here in our local application schema, the PAL schema, what we need to do are to create a parameter table and the results table. And we can do that very simply based on the types we did already. And then also we have a number of parameters that can be put into the binning because there are, in fact there are many different statistical approaches you can take to performing this binning or grouping. Effectively, what the algorithm will do is take all the values of the income, look at those values in the context of their near neighbors, so looking at the neighborhood, and decide what the most appropriate groups are or bins and then assign each income value to a bin value. So there are different ways of doing that. For example, you can specify that you want to have um, uh, each bin to have exactly the same size or width, and we want to have three or five different bins. Or equally, you could say, okay, I want to have five bins, but I want to have an equal number of customers assigned to each bin. So there are different approaches to do that, and that's controlled through the binning method. So zero is to say we're going to create uh, an equal sized uh, buckets or bins um, and we will have the number we define here as bin number. The smoothing method 
or the smooth method is what allows you to decide exactly which value is used for the income group. Effectively, two good ways of doing it. One would be to say use the, the mean value of the incomes for what has been found within that group. Or you might also say use the median or the middle value. If you were to line all the values of that group together, use that middle value as the value for the, the bin or the income uh, group name. And the median approach is quite useful if you have a lot of outliers in the data because if you're doing an average their outliers can often skew the average a little bit. So there are different approaches and again you'll get more details uh, in the manual and of course I don't have time to go into all of the stats behind doing that in this first example. So let's run the code uh, in our application schema, create the tables and update the parameter table with some values and then we're ready to just go and run some example. So we now run an example, it takes just a couple of seconds on that data. We will see there is now a B underscore results table. So let's have a look at the B underscore results table. So what we can see is that we've got each ID, that's each customer ID, plus we've now got a new column called income group. And as we asked for three different bins to be created, it's created a variable with three different values, one, two, and three. And we can actually also see what is the, uh, the actual pre-calculation, what is the income value that's been assigned um, as, as, as the, the root of that income group. So we can see that. So if we were to look at the distinct values and do that by income group, we can see we've got three income groups, we can actually count how many different customers have been assigned to each of those income groups and see the distribution. So that's one quick way of, of doing it. We've now created a new column. So we have that new column called income group. If you wanted then to join that onto our original data to maybe get more context, we could just run a query like this, just a simple inner join on the original data set. And then we can see, for example, we've got the ID of the customer, the income value, and now the income group that that uh, customer was assigned to. As I say, we have three groups here. So that's basically what binning's all about. It's basically about simplifying the data in terms of reducing complexity, having a smaller number of discrete values that, that you're actually then going to further analyze. But of course it makes sense to have that set of values to be as meaningful and as closely adapted to the way the data naturally flows as possible. Now if we were just to show a quick example how we can continue this maybe to, to run something a little different, we could for example set the number of bins. Instead of three we could put that up to five. And maybe we want to change the binning method and this time actually when we set a value of two, which of course you'll find the details in the reference guide, a value of two says we want to put an equal number of customers into each of these buckets or bins. Okay, so we clear out the table, rerun the procedure. Okay, it's now running in a couple of seconds. And if we now go and refresh the results, we'll see that we've got five different income groups. And interestingly, if we refresh the distinct values, what we will now see is that there are exactly the same number of values in each of those bins because we asked to take that approach. So he basically found an equal number of values in the way he grouped together to create the income group. So that's a quick introduction to binning with HANA and of course as always do go to the reference guide for the PAL that you can see in other videos where to download this and that will give you all the details behind the parameters and options that are available with binning in the PAL.